This is Lorena Mora Maori from Mujer Latina Today. We have the pleasure to interview today a good friend, but also we were last year in the, the book, Women's Book, and she's our dear Alicia Titwell. Welcome to Mujer Latina Today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. We're going to talk about your promotion later, but let's talk about that beginning because we have a storyteller. Where I'm a storyteller and I like to interview women to share the story so that we can inspire you. So let's just talk about that little girl. Was it, was, were, you were born in Cincinnati. Yes. And tell me about your, your, the most memory of your childhood and now how that memory has helped to be, help you to become the woman that you are today. Our childhood was good. We lived in a family of a husband and a wife, and I know nowadays they're blended families, but my mom and dad were there. They were actively uh, involved in our lives, gainfully employed. Every move we made was a move for the better because my father wanted to make sure that we had um, the right environment in order for us to be successful. Um, my dad believed in education, and he still does to this day that he has 12 grandkids and all of them have educations. So it is a testament of the foundational principles that he gave us. He said that everybody is a leader and you have the leader within you. And regardless of what the world presents you, you can succeed if you try. And all you have to do is work hard. My parents went to work every day and that's what we saw, so that's what we emulate. Who was the most influenced you the most? My mom. Why? My mother was a very strong woman, Lorena, very strong, and she didn't take excuses. She would always say, okay, so how are you going to overcome that? If you had a problem, she did not let you wallow in that. First thing she said, okay, what's the problem? And she would get quiet, and you would explain what the problem was. She said, so how are you going to come overcome that? And she'd get quiet until you figured it out. And her favorite words were, go figure it out and come back. And we did. And it's a constant figuring it out in your lifetime of what you have to do in order for you to get over those hurdles. Some hurdles are harder, some are smaller, but we figured it out. We're capable to figure it out. We are capable of figuring it out. Tell us about the road, how you build the road to be successful now. My road to success in corporate America started in a factory. In a factory. In a factory. Uh -huh. And it started in a factory. I worked in a factory for 22 years, a paper company. And I rose to the ranks within that company to the highest one of the highest positions in our plant. The plant closed down, and I had to reinvent myself. What am I going to do next? Well, at the time, computers were very, very prevalent in corporate America. I knew how to, to set up a computer on a machine, but I didn't know how to set up a computer that sat in front of me. So I went to school. I went to school for computer training, reinvented myself, got a resume. I had worked for a company for 22 years and I only had two jobs at that time. Oh I worked for the IRS first and then I went into the factory and worked. So at that time I said, what am I going to do when the company closed down? you got to reinvent yourself to what is needed in corporate America nowadays. I went to school and educated myself. And then I started going to job fairs and rebranding myself constantly after finding out what it is that I needed to be successful in corporate America. Working in a factory environment is different from working in corporate America. You have to reinvent. I wore jeans every day in the factory. In corporate America, you have to come business casual or business. I started to reinvent myself, and that's been the key to my success, the reinvention of me constantly. Each position I go in, I know that there's another expectation. I have to reinvent constantly. You have to make sure that you're meeting those criteria to get to the next level. And coming to Lazadica, it was kind of like a fluke because some lady was a client of my daughter's. My daughter's a beautician by trade, and she looked at my glasses, asked me was there the, the product I had on my face, was it Lazotica's? I said, the eyeglass company? And she said, yes, that's where I work. I said, are they hiring? She said, yes, they are. She took my resume, and the rest is history. Now you are? The Senior Manager of Diversity and Inclusion. I've been with the organization for 12 years. I started as a frontline associate in our IMAD assignment collections, and I worked my way through the ranks to be Senior Manager here at Lazotica. 
Tell me about the challenges, because we as a woman, we face a lot of challenges. I know that we always overcome those challenges, but because I want to, to send a message that, you know, we all face challenges and we learn how to overcome. What was the biggest challenge that you faced? My biggest challenge was when I came into the current or well, the role prior to this one, was that I had no experience. I didn't have, I had a knowledge base, but no experience. So I had to figure out, how are you going to be able to do this job effectively to move the needle in our organization? So I started to surround myself with mentors, sponsors, and advocates that could help me understand my role and overcome those hurdles that I had in acquiring the skill sets that I needed to be an effective leader. So to me, it's always about the people who you surround yourself with that will help you overcome those challenges in order for you to be successful. A woman in an industry where it's dominated by males that you are in, I am. and how you come overcome those, and with it being an ethnic publication as well, you have to overcome those hurdles to be as successful as those big um, editors in this in this uh, great world of uh, technology and knowledge but at the end of the day it's the same for me what is it that I need to do in order for me to be successful I need to continue to educate myself education 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 going to conferences going to events after work networking surrounding yourself with great people that's going to elevate you and sponsor you as well to say okay, you don't have this, but I can help you with this. So those are the challenges that I thought was so huge for me to overcome. But once I did, I was off to the races. When you look back and you think about your life, because you have two jobs and now you're in a corporate and a big corporation, it, you can't believe it? You think, oh my gosh, oh, how do I keep this? I don't, some days, Lorena, I sit and I think, how did I get here? I did. Well, first and foremost, by faith. I believe that God has a destiny plan for all of us and that he sets this thing up step by step by step that is not by happenstance that you and I are sitting here today. You, you and I are supposed to know each other for whatever reason. There's something that you have that I need and something that I have that you need. And it's by faith that I got here that I even in standing in the factory and working on the line, I knew there was something greater in me. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew there was something greater than me. And one of my mentors said, Alicia, our people have always known there was greatness in you. The only person didn't know was you. And once I tapped into that, and even to this day, it is so empowering that I started late on this journey. I'm 60 years old, and I'm still in corporate America learning immersing myself into a culture in a corporation, corporate America, and I'm here and I'm learning, retaining information. It's empowering, it's invigorating for me. You work with diversity. Tell me about, you have been corporate, you have been working in, in factories. Tell me about what a diversity means to you now, and especially for a corporation now that it's bigger and bigger, the, the talent that they bring into the corporation. It is imperative for every corporation to have diverse talent. First and foremost, not because of the fact that we look different, but because we think different. My foundational principles are different from yours because of the way you were raised, and vice versa. That's what we bring to the table. Something different to help each other to see differently and think differently about another human being that is sitting next to you who may or may not look like you. But we all bring something to the table. And at the end of the day, for Lazotica, our associates have to mirror our customers because we have, our associates have to, uh, our customers have to mirror our associates. We have Latino families coming into our stores. And if we don't understand the way that they buy, we're, revenue is going to go out the door. Latinos families shop together. We're not just selling to the person in the chair. We're selling to the family. To the family. To the family. That is important in the Latino community, which it should be important in every community. But for us, we had to learn these things in order to teach our associates to be able to um, service different demographics when they come into our stores. It's a revenue driver. Tell me how you define yourself and how we have to define us as a today woman. I say it's my brand. It's who I am. That. I am a masterpiece.
that God only gave this world one of me. And what I do with the resources that he has blessed me with is going to be on me. I don't compare myself anymore. As you get older, you get wiser to anyone else. Tell me about Because at the end of the day, I bring something unique to the table as well as you. I'm not intimidated by your knowledge base. I want to learn from it. That's what empowers me, that I can learn from you, Lorena, and hopefully that you can learn from me. I see the beauty in you every time I see you, and hopefully that you can see the same in me because of the fact that we all are masterpieces and that there's, we're only one of a kind and we bring something unique to this world and that if we come together collaboratively and bring all that uniqueness, that beauty, resiliency, and that force that we have as women, we can change the world. There's nothing that we can't do together, but we have to come together. And that's the reason why the women's book was so powerful for me, because it was all of these great women coming together with all these commonalities to say, I am empowered, I am beautiful, I am one of a kind, and most of all, I'm okay. Isn't that wonderful to interview you? Oh, oh thank God. you so much. <laughs> this has been so cool for me, just because I think you are awesome in oh. what you do, I do. And hopefully that we as women should make each other want to be better. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, this is, this is a wonderful opportunity. You give me another opportunity to interview you just to talk about women. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Anytime, Lorena. Thank Anytime. you so much. Thank you so much, my friend.